All right, everyone, welcome back to our BD Swiss uh, session here, a market moves on the Meet the Trader 4. Special session, obviously, here for the day. Uh, please give me a heads up if the sounds all right, if you can hear me for now talking, and as well, of course, uh, my colleague uh, Marshall Gitler. So, a special session, and I'm happy as well that uh, since uh, Marshall is with us here at BD Swiss, uh, that uh, we have our first co hosted session, and in this case, obviously, I prepared uh, something. Uh, what? Well, definitely loads of the background information prepared by Marshall. Marshall, are you with us already for now? Oh, yes, yes. Cool, great. So to make it easier, um, I've started sharing the screen here right now. And uh, Marshall, just uh, give me a heads up when you like me to switch to the next slide. And uh, potentially, I think uh, we should uh, get going. And uh, I would hand over the charts or the uh, explanation uh, right over to you. So impact of the virus on the FX market is our topic. And uh, Marshall, I keep uh, quiet for now. And uh, I'll let you uh, start uh, uh, what you have prepared for us so far. So please uh, go ahead. Okay, well, thank you very much, Frank. Uh, well, I'm just going to give an overview of what I'm going to say, and then I'm going into more detail. The impact of the virus on the FX market starts from the fact that economies are collapsing. Uh, there is no supply, or, or a, lot, a lot of the supply has collapsed as people can't go into work in the factories, and demand has collapsed at the same time because people are just not going out. I'm Personally, I'm uh, legally confined to my, my apartment, for example, here in, here in Cyprus. We're all locked down by law. The government's reaction to this has been the, the crucial point. There's been an extraordinary reaction by governments far exceeding anything ever done before, even in 2008. There's been extraordinary fiscal stimulus measures, trillions of dollars pumped in. And the monetary authorities have gone along with that, uh, lowering interest rates down to zero and rekindling their quantitative easing programs. So both fiscal and monetary policy have been mobilized 100% for this. The market reaction uh, to these events has already progressed somewhat. The first step was taking risk off. In particular, a lot of uh, people took their carry trades off. That was, that's what caused the euro to appreciate at first. Then uh, the, there was a rush to roll over dollar-denominated loans, which, put, which uh, quite surprised, took a lot of people by surprise and pushed the dollar up substantially. Uh, meanwhile, everyone has been selling currencies that are suffering from terms of trade shock. These are the commodities currencies that uh, find their ex the prices of their exports plunging. Uh, from now, though, uh, in the future, I think the market strategy will be to buy and sell currencies based on how quickly their economies and their countries are going to emerge from this crisis. Uh, the economic indicators are taking a second uh, a step back. What's uh, important is how good uh, the government's policies are for dealing with the virus and how quickly uh, people think that these countries can emerge from, from the crisis and regain some measure of normality. Okay, well, moving on to the next slide, please. Right, yep. Okay, the uh, economies have been hit by five shocks. And this is, explains why it's, uh, it's so dramatic. We've never had all five of such shocks hitting uh, the, global, the global economy, not just one country, every country at the same time. First and foremost, I think, is the demand shock. As people stay home and stop buying things, just demand has dried up completely. This is throwing millions of people out of work. Uh, even... Um, at the same time, even for those people and companies that are still in business, there's a supply shock. Factory workers are also staying home and stopping pr producing. Uh, transportation links have been shut down. Uh, a lot of air freight, for example, ca uh, is carried in the holds of passenger planes. Now that most passenger planes are grounded, Air freight is uh, is grinding to a halt, so there's a demand shock and supply shock at the same time. Meanwhile, the negative wealth shock, uh, as stock and bond prices are collapsing, the uh, retirement savings of, of many people are just disappearing. 
and that's causing anybody who can go out and spend still to, to pull back as well, adding to the demand shock. A credit shock at the same time, uh, credit ratings are falling, the, uh, making banks less willing to lend to companies at the same time as companies need more and more money. Uh, this is causing very big difficulties for companies to raise funds at this crucial time. And topping everything off is an oil shock. Uh, not only is the price of oil falling because of the, uh, the drop in demand, but the end of the OPEC plus agreement has, been, has resulted in flooding of markets with oil. This would be good under normal circumstances because it would provide uh, consumers with cheaper gasoline, therefore uh, allowing uh, acting sort of as a tax cut, but people aren't traveling anyway. All it means is that, uh, that the debt owned, owed by uh, uh, oil producing companies, especially in the States, is, uh, is going bad. There are hundreds of billions of dollars borrowed by oil companies that's uh, going bad because these companies can't meet their bills anymore. And that's causing a big adding to the credit shock. So these are the five shocks that the, the economy is weathering right now. These are unprecedented in peacetime and in fact, actually exceeding some things that we've seen in wartime. Uh, could we have the next slide, please? Just an example of the, uh, the demand shock and the, and the uh, hit to labor. This is a, a graph of restaurant bookings from a, a website called Open Table. It does online restaurant bookings, a year and year change in restaurant bookings. You can see they are down about 100%. Nobody is going to the restaurants anymore. Uh, that's very serious. Seven and a half percent of all American workers work in restaurants. This is just one example of the way the supply shock is, is rocking the economy. These people are out of work. We're going to have record levels of unemployment. Even during wartime, you don't see things like this. It's unprecedented. Next slide, please. So the same thing has happened all over the world, uh, which we can see from looking at the purchasing managers indices. These are the purchasing managers indices from uh, the US, the Eurozone, et cetera. The blue line is the manufacturing PMI and the green line is the services PMI. Normally the blue line, the manufacturing is much more cyclical than the services PMI because usually people continue to uh, buy the same level of services no matter what happens, but they can put off uh, buying things when times are bad. For example, when in a recession, you might not buy a new iPad, but you will keep paying for your internet, uh, which is a service. This is the first time we've seen anything like this where the services PMIs have just collapsed completely. All over the world, we're seeing the same phenomenon. And in most cases, this is worse, far worse than it was in 2008, 2009, the global financial crisis. You can see uh, how the blue and green lines track the red lines fairly closely. The red lines are GDP, year-on-year -year growth of GDP. So this is what we're going to be seeing in, for GDP in, this, in the sec second quarter. Uh, first and second quarter of 2020, we're going to see a collapse of GDP like we have never seen it before. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the, the way we can see this in the um, better envision the hit to employment in particular. This is the US employment by sector. Most people work in services in the US. 71% of the people work in services, only 14% work in manufacturing, 15% work in government. government. Government, of course, will be less hit, much less hit by this, although government includes education, and a lot of teachers may be laid off now. But it's really this private sector employment is going in uh, the services is going to take a huge hit. And of course, one person's income is another person, one person's spending is another person's income. If people aren't going to restaurants, then people who work at restaurants don't get an income. 
And if they don't get an income, then they don't get their haircut. And if the hairdresser doesn't get a, an income, then he or she uh, doesn't order a pizza or whatever. It ripples through the economy, and that's what's going to cause the huge, unprecedented downturn in economic growth. Next slide, please. Uh, we've seen the, this uh, so far manifested in the U.S. jobless claims that came out last week. <laughs> Unbelievable. The record high, previous record high was 695,000 new claims for unemployment insurance. Uh, in the most recent week, we saw 3.28 million. Uh, of course, the U.S. economy is a lot bigger than it was back in 1982 when this happened before, but you can see on the graph on the right, even as a percent of the working population, it's several times worse than we have ever seen it before. So we're probably going to see the unemployment rate rising to a record high, not in this month's figures coming out Friday, but in the figures for, uh, for a, when we get the April figures, they will probably show unemployment at a record high. April and May, we'll probably see a record high unemployment in the US. Uh, next slide, please. And we can see the impact on GDP here uh, somewhat in Singapore. Singapore is the first country in the world to issue its GDP figures every quarter. It's based mostly on the January and February data, not the March data. And I might add, Singapore has had one of the best responses around to the, the, the virus. They got it under control very quickly and have, have had only very minor cases. Still. Uh, we saw the, uh, the GDP fall 10.6% quarter on quarter, much worse than in, during the global financial crisis. Although I have to say during the global financial crisis, it was two quarters in a row of 8 or 9% uh, decline. So cumulatively it was more, but this is for a one quarter hit is the worst they've ever had. Next slide. And we're going to see this throughout the world, I think. Now, in response to this, governments have come up with huge uh, packages of, uh, to, to deal with the crisis. Uh, this just shows this, the uh, am amount that these countries have uh, mobilized and the stimulus as a percent of GDP. We can see it ranges from 20% in Germany. Uh, the US is doing about 10%. And uh, other countries, uh, less, but everybody's getting on on board with this. And I, these are all subject to change without notice too. I think if the uh, virus continues, I think governments have shown that they are willing to add to this as well. I think people are, are realizing that this is not a financial crisis. This is not a, a recession. This is a medical emergency. And it's the role of government to step in at such times and provide a bridge lest the economy basically disappear and not uh, companies that go bankrupt now will not necessarily be revived once the economy, once the virus is uh, conquered and things start up at the other side. Next slide, please. Uh, along with the monetary, with the fiscal stimulus, we've had monetary policy mobilized around the world as well. Uh, the left-hand graph shows G10 and the, the policy rates of the G10 and G20 countries combined. Uh, you can see they've all cut their interest rates. Now the median interest rate of a central bank is below 1%. Many of them are back to zero now. Uh, and central banks have uh, launched quantitative easing programs as well. We can get the best uh, first indication of that from the Fed, which announces its uh, balance sheet every week. You can see how they they quickly increase, increase the size of their balance sheet, quickly injected a, a, about a trillion dollars into the economy, just boom. Uh, we're going to see that around the world from the ECB, from the Bank of England. Uh, the Bank of Japan has doubled the amount of, of exchange traded funds it's going to buy. This is a coordinated effort on the monetary side as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the FX market's initial response to this was to take off carry trades. We've seen, the, initially we saw economic policy uncertainty, 
policy uncertainty and stock market volatility rise sharply. Uh, the graph on the left shows, believe it or not, an index of uh, US economic policy uncertainty done by uh, combing through newspapers and uh, internet headlines. You can see that, uh, that jumped to a record level. We've got data actually back to 1985. It jumped to a record level. And the VIX index, which measures basically stock market volatility, expected stock market volatility has jumped not, uh, not back to where it, exactly where it was in 2008, but pretty high. Usually or normally when there's uncertainty in the world, when there's uh, some tension, people take off their carry trades. And you can see that, that how that happened on the graph on the right, which shows the return from a global carry basket and a G10 carry basket. People quickly unwound their, their carry trades. Uh, this caused a lot, a lot of this uh, caused a big uh, surge in the Euro. People were funding their trades by borrowing in Euro, which had the lowest interest rates in the world. And they were, uh, they, they unwound those trades, repaid their Euro uh, loans, and that caused the Euro to appreciate at first. Next slide, please. Uh, but then came the big wave, and this is what's confounded a lot of people, including me. Uh, I thought the U.S. response to this virus was so appalling that the dollar would be the worst hit currency here. But as you may have noticed, the dollar has been soaring over the last couple of days, or last couple of weeks, and I'd like to explain why this is. You can see from the graph on the left how much higher U.S. bond yields have been than other major bond markets for the last couple of years. The US bond market is the red line, uh, and especially I'd like to point out the green line, which is Japanese bonds. Japanese 10-year bond yields have been zero uh, for the last four years. Uh, so it really paid a lot of people in Japan to borrow dollars and invest in the US, in US bonds. In fact, people all over the world were doing that. So the graph on the right shows foreign borrowing in dollars. You can see how it's doubled since the global financial crisis. The global financial crisis, it was $6 trillion. Now global borrowings in dollars are over $12 trillion. That's a huge amount of what is in effect a short dollar position. These people owe dollars, That's, they're short. So they started to scramble for dollars at the same time as banks are much less able to lend because a lot of companies had credit lines, open credit lines to banks. These were basically banks saying, okay, if you need money, we will lend it to you. But the banks didn't have the money, they weren't, didn't keep the money just sitting around in, a, in the vault waiting to lend it. They didn't actually have the money on hand uh, because many of them didn't expect to lend this then all of a sudden, all these companies that realized, wow, we're not gonna have any income for the next couple of months, went and drew down these credit lines from their banks, which meant the banks had to go out in the market and get these dollars. So people trying to roll over these dollars were fighting for space on the bank's balance sheets, and the banks just didn't have the money. They didn't have the space on the balance sheet to lend them. Next slide, please. So this is what caused the, the dollar to soar. And this is the major disruption that we've seen in the, in the Forex market. A lot of these, this money was raised through foreign exchange swaps. A company that held yen now, had, had yen, for example, would sell the yen forward in the foreign exchange market, thereby getting dollars for it. Usually, the cost of this kind of a trade should be just simply the difference between the dollar interest rates and the yen interest rates, a very simple calculation of how much it costs to sell yen now and buy dollars and then buy the dollars forward, just it's the difference in interest rates. But it isn't. There's, because of the difference demand for, for one side of this trade over the other side, especially in a the post Dodd Frank uh, environment where banks are balance sheet constrained, the price of this trade very uh, differs from what the theoretical price should be because of the 
different willingness or desire of people to be on one side of the trade or the other. That difference is called the currency basis swap. And you can see here how when this hit, the basis swap just blew out, especially for yen and euros, as people who had uh, gotten dollars by doing these sorts of foreign exchange swaps went into the market and just covered their position at any cost they could. That's why the dollar has been soaring recently, but notice that these uh, these have come in substantially recently. And in fact, the uh, euro and the pound have moved to premiums instead of discounts. This is because one of the Fed measures to deal with the crisis was to enlarge its currency swaps with other central banks. It uh, it enlarged the swaps. It increased the number of central banks that it would swap with, and it lowered the interest rates on these swaps. Meanwhile, the other central banks have increased their auctions of dollars, making the dollar freely available to their uh, to banks in their region. This has reduced the sort of panic buying of dollars and brought the dollar brought the markets back into some measure of equilibrium. Still, the yen is a bit distorted which explains why even in this kind of a risk-off environment, the yen has not appreciated as much as you might think it would have. Uh, usually it's the a safe haven currency that appreciates during periods of uh, market fear. But this may all be over as this excess demand is being uh, met and the dollar may trade more in line with fundamentals from now on, I believe. Okay, next slide, please. So the, the measures that the Fed and other central banks have taken have started to have an impact. You can see on the graph on the left, we've got some financial conditions indices. These show whether markets are, are under stress or not. Uh, they haven't really been turning up very much, but at least they've stopped declining for the time being. We don't have that many days, more days data, but they've stopped declining for now. We may see gradually, I hope, some uh, restoration of normality. Uh, the U.S. is still a lot of distortion, but the Fed has, has, is instituting a number of programs, including, for example, in commercial paper, which it usually doesn't deal in. And now there's talk that it might even go into municipal bonds. This is unprecedented stuff. Uh, they're, they're really aware of this issue, and they're dealing with it as best they can. Meanwhile, in the, in the Eurozone, we saw peripheral bond spreads blow out as people worried that uh, money wasn't going to flow to the more troubled countries. ECB President Lagarde has made it clear that in fact it will. They've thrown the rule book out. Uh, they're going to be willing to buy as much Italian paper as is necessary to keep Italy afloat. And so spreads have come in uh, very much so. So this shows that after the initial panic, the m measures of the, of the central banks are starting to gain some traction. Next slide, please. Uh, how has this been affecting the markets, uh, the other currencies? What we've seen is that the commodity currencies have had a very big terms of trade shock. Terms of trade is the price of what you sell compared to the price of what you buy, the terms of your international trade. Uh, for Australia, you can see on the graph on the left, you can see how well the Aussie dollar rate, the red line here, tracks the commodity prices. The blue line is the Bloomberg Commodity Index. Obviously, if global, if nobody is going to work and nobody is building anything and nobody can drive their car and uh, demand for commodities is going to plunge and that's going to hit the Aussie dollar, which has been very hard hit recently. Same with the Canadian dollar on the right. Uh, oh, Aussie is, of course, also very closely aligned with China, which was very early, hit very early on. Aussie uh, dollar Canada on the, on the right, uh, you can see the connection between dollar Canada, the red line, and the price of oil that uh, Canada sells, Western Select, which is the blue line. <laughs> the only good thing we can say here is that unlike interest rates, oil ca prices can't go negative. Uh, so there is a limit to how, how high, how low oil prices can go. What you can see, though, is people just turning off the tap. 
Uh, that's what we saw today for, or on Friday, for example, in the US. Every week they announced the number of oil and gas rigs being used and 40 of them were shut or 44 of them were shut off last week, which is the highest we've seen since 2016. Uh, so basically, they're just closing the taps, uh, turning off the oil wells. This is not only bad for uh, Canada's terms of trade, but of course, a lot of people work in the oil industry. And a lot of people, the oil industry fuels a lot of uh, the Canadian economy. So lower oil prices, lower employment uh, layoffs in the oil industry will have a ripple effect to the Canadian economy. And that's all bad for the Canadian dollar. We're seeing similar with New Zealand dollar and especially with the Norwegian krona, I should say, which is the uh, krona and ruble are the uh, oil-based currencies. So from now on, what are we going to see? Uh, the uh, head of, of the person most respected in the U.S. is uh, Mr. Fauci, I think you pronounce his name. Uh, the, the head of the National Institute of Health. Uh, he's the, the most respected guy now in the talking about uh, the virus in America. Uh, you can see him making faces and face palming uh, in the background during Trump's uh, press conferences. What he said was Trump was talking about getting people back in churches by April and get by, by uh, Easter and blah, blah, blah. And what he said it was, you don't make the timeline, the virus does. This is the big unknown. We just don't know how long it's going to take for everything to settle down. Uh, so far, the number of cases is exploding. Uh, it's, it seems to be slowing down a little bit in uh, Italy, and it's certainly, according to the official figures, slowed down a lot in China, but it's still growing very rapidly in the United States. Uh, next slide, please. We can see this graph uh, from the Financial Times, which shows the increase. The, this is a logarithmic scale, which is very important. A straight line on a logarithmic scale means that you're having exponential growth, meaning doubling every certain number of days. It doesn't mean it's increasing the same number every period, which would be if it were a regular scale. An exponential scale is very different. What we can see is that uh, the USA, that Trump has succeeded in making the USA number one in the world in one area. Well, besides Turkey, maybe. And that is the fastest growing number of virus cases because of his just abysmal handling of this crisis in total. Anyway, pardon me. I'll get done. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is very bad. The number of cases is increasing very rapidly in the U.S., whereas you can see in many other countries, the exponential curve is starting to bend. It's no longer going straight in Italy and China, and even Spain. It's starting to bend significantly, so that which means the growth is slowing down, but still it is, it's slowing down from doubling every two days to doubling every three days which is still very, very bad. We've got a long ways to go on this. Uh, next slide, please. Just, I, 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 this may not be of interest, but I just had to put this in. America lives in two, Americans live in two different worlds, depending on whether you are a Republican or whether you are a Democrat. Basically, the Republicans don't really believe this is a problem. They uh, because Trump early on was blaming this on the fake media and saying, oh, it's just, uh, they're just trying to get me uh, out of office. So uh, Republicans are taking this much less seriously than Democrats. Uh, so far, actually, this is the virus is more widespread in democratic areas, which tend to be more urban. Uh, but this is, I think this is going to really delay the resolution of the problem because a lot of people simply don't think it's a problem. And they are in for a rude, rude shock when their grandmother dies. Next slide, please. So there is really only three ways the virus uh, problem can end. 
the best way would be if every country manages to get it under control, which is what happened with SARS in 2003, uh, that they just that the, the lockdowns work and it stops. That would be very nice, but uh, it's quite kind of unlikely. Uh, the next way, the next best would be, or the, the other, another way, which is what the, they were starting to do in, in UK, is just to let it run. Uh, this is what your normal flu ep pandemic does. Uh, people get their flu shots, but usually it just goes through the world. Uh, people who get it, get it. Some get sick, some die. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, the enough people become immune to it that it eventually burns out. They, uh, as I said, the UK started to do this, but it wouldn't, uh, it, they gave up because they realized millions would probably die, die from this. Uh, and then I think what, what's going to happen probably, in my view, is that the world is going to struggle to get it under control until a vaccine is finally produced. Uh, you know, social distancing will work in some places, but uh, other people, some, as we saw, there are some Republicans who don't believe it exists, are going to, to aren't going to keep uh, their distance, and uh, there, there will be reservoirs of the virus left, and it will uh, keep cropping up here and there until finally, in a year or two, a vaccine is produced, and then it will be just like the regular flu. Uh, so. Meanwhile, people are just wondering how fast and how completely the world can bounce back from this. And we don't know because, as I said, it's up to the virus, not up to, uh, to, uh, to people. Uh, is it going to be a V-shaped recovery like we saw after the SARS virus in uh, 2003? The fastest growth in Hong Kong GDP on record was the quarter after the SARS virus ended when poof, everyone who had wanted to go out and buy a watch went out. Is it going to be U-shaped where it goes down and then we have a long period at the bottom and then uh, eventually a fast recovery? Or is it going to be L-shaped where it goes down and then just stays down? Well, we don't know. And that's what's going to be the problem and that's what people will, that what's going to be the issue here. So what have the market moves so far been? We can see how the dollar has so far gained uh, then the risk sensitive or the safe haven yen and Swiss franc have been the big winners and the commodity currencies have been the big losers, uh, especially the oil sensitive Norwegian krona and uh, the commodity sensitive Australian dollar. And that is so far, that's what we've had so far. But the question is, what's going to happen from here? And for that, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Frank, who will give you the trading advice for what to do with your in the future. <laughs> Let's see if I'm in the position to do so. Great stuff, um, Marshall. Thanks a lot for your insights. Uh, I think we've learned quite a bit now on uh, what markets are doing, what has been going on, and how we, uh, and how especially you see the uh, current uh, situation. I'd like to go back a few slides before I'm turning over because I have some questions in the markets and I have some questions on how those numbers technically really make sense. Um, you said uh, it doesn't make, that's not a timeline uh, which we should use and how the case um, the cases are currently uh, developing. The question right now I kind of have is the, like how those numbers ser seriously make sense. There's some growing factors, also there's some growing, uh, not protest, uh, but at least in Germany, and uh, of course in my home country as well going on. The question would be, we need technically, in order to kind of talk about uh, pandemic uh, exposure, we need uh, uh, a rough uh, estimate of potentially say 10,000 people being tested, 10,000 people generally being infected or not, 10,000 people within uh, the society which uh, should be tested in order to find really evidence that this uh, is called a pandemic. Because all we do is uh, we have numbers, we are, we are saying that there's more people being infected by the virus, but those numbers are totally wrong. Why? Because if we're starting to test more, we're getting uh, higher amounts of infected uh, people. And we can see on your slide, China potentially even just testing less, 
and saying we have a we have a we have a similar amount of infections right now. Even right now, if you see looking at the cases per day, they are they are going down in China, which is potentially the case since the pandemic and exposure has been going on. But uh, we simply don't know. So, meaning to say, a uh, long story short. We need to test today 10,000 people in the society and see how many are being infected. We need to test 10,000 people in, say, two days from now to see if really the exposure of the virus is growing. That's essentially where the entire story is totally wrong, where the entire story is just totally a, bit, a, a big media hype because as well, and that's also what some other critics say, that potentially everyone or a lot of people in the society are already being infected. And uh, in this case, uh, all the measures are potentially too late. Now, I would say as well, it makes sense to stay at home. It makes sense to uh, to to um, to observe caution, and uh, as well, what what stops the pandemic exposure potentially is that uh, wearing a mask means if you're not infected, which uh, of course it's uh, what the incubation time says. If you're not infected by the virus, uh, at least at least it stops you from spreading it because the masks usually uh, work best to 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 stop uh, to stop from these droplets to leave uh, to leave your own body, and they are they are being being uh, stopped with the mask of course uh, directly and uh, usually the help potentially on uh, getting infected is a bit less but anyways that's that's my idea right now and uh, the entire uh, answer from the government uh, you've made uh, clear uh, pretty much you pointed out uh, the big amount of help and aid uh, programs which are being rolled out right now hopefully they arrive at some point and they can uh, they can at least um, stop the economy from sliding which is uh, which is the big uh, the big uh, um, the big story what's happening uh, right now at least in the markets not that i'm a kind of pro for the economy but i'm really worried that uh, the demand which is not there as you as you said as well marshall is uh, is pretty much causing the issue and uh, that might lead to a further uh, recession and uh, you mentioned uh, towards the end of your of your words right now the v shape the u shape or potentially the l shape uh, in the economic expansion now we can see gold prices have reached a certain peak, interim peak. If we're looking at the monthly chart, we could potentially also say that uh, so far the market is uh, at least in a sideways pattern. If we're looking at the gold in the US dollar terms, we can also see that markets are in a pretty much a sideways. Uh, if we're looking behind what's happening as well, pretty much the, um, uh, the physical market of gold is uh, in a bit of a standstill. If you're looking at the, the Germans as well in this case, like the Degussa, the Pro Aurums and all the other online shops, they are closed. If you're uh, potentially uh, having the chance to, to, to buy some gold still, that's uh, potentially uh, working out. But uh, I'm wondering that the market seemingly is pretty much illiquid already, which is, uh, which is to me at least a bit of a warning sign. A warning sign that the further closure of the economy might really lead to a big depression. And uh, I used the words and I've been criticized for that from uh, some of my business partners and friends as well. I, I had a look at uh, what had been happening in 1929 and remember pretty well that uh, before the World War there was a there was a big uh, bull market run which we had also seen until recently there had been no alternative to stock investments and all that and the market subsequently really uh, took a very long time uh, the numbers I digged out were that it took 30 years for the for the stock market to recover the losses which were as as deep as 80 or 90 percent in the market and uh, that's potentially what we can see to look forward so i would say we should really invest uh, at least and trade with caution what we can see if we're looking at the s p and uh, we were in the fortunate uh, situation enough for the ones of you at least in our uh, vip telegram group uh, you had been able to really jump on our huge idea of selling the markets uh, to the downside so we hopped on the higher the market went which was uh, was the end of last year, October, November. Just uh, look back in our in our um, hot assets as well. Every day I said uh, we should really um, we should really kind of uh, talk uh, and think of what the stock market might do. Ten-year bull run likely over. Markets crashing. Now I can stand here as well and talking nicely about uh, what I had assumed already and what, of course, is what we had uh, we had traded accordingly. Now my account is kind of up and running. That's uh, a bit of an advertising story as well, and uh, that's of course as well why you had been potentially trading nicely here with us. Uh, with BD Swiss, uh, uh, we made uh, an 85,000 uh, profit here with our trading alerts uh, only from uh, from the beginning of March. So that's not uh, not a not a lie. This is a real account. You can see that. So everything we present here is just not uh, nonsense information, but uh, trackable, uh, uh, hard rock solid information. So our trades were up and running, and the 1929 disaster really is not over yet. I still believe, and uh, we can see certain support areas here. If we're looking at it. From a technical point of view, we can see that the markets are pretty much still in a free fall mode just because 
the markets have started regaining some ground here in the recent um, in the recent uh, the last week where we also took some profit and in fact we are still in it right so for the ones of you here being interested we bought some bp british petroleum also up and running we have still some uh, daimler for the ones of you liking fast cars like me uh, there's still some daimler stuff in our portfolio and for the dutchies uh, the shell, uh, the shell, uh, the shell price really had uh, had bottomed in terms at least the bottom at 12, where we entered and is now at 14. So not a bad trade so far as well. And uh, as well, we are looking forward to see what's happening. But what we can see as well that uh, from being back towards a bullish scenario, technically in the charts we can see the market is still rather moving lower. What had gone up last week is seemingly at a pretty much resistance area and we might see that the markets are really dropping further now 1929 we had the same the markets for several months after uh, going down went up again and which is called the, the bull the bullish the bullish move in a bear market and that's exactly what i would assume being a bit negatively off the markets right now what we might see we might see that uh, still all this is just a fake a fake bullish uh, candle formation here in the markets and we might still see that the markets might go lower now, Marshall said, and I'm fully with that as well, that's at least how fundamentally also the markets work, information which is being present and uh, which is being uh, debated already that the cases in the US likely growing. Again, we all know now the Americans have test kits and they start testing more. So of course, more confirmed cases uh, are being shown and I don't need to be dumb to understand that if you test more, you also find more positive persons. Hence, again, back to my to my to my to my beginning words i want 10000 people to be tested in germany worldwide uh, uh, of any kind of society to understand if the if the pandemic is really there and if those numbers are growing uh, full stop so until that's happening we can see that the market so far are uh, showing some positive move because whatever we know right now is that uh, the uh, the the virus uh, the virus is really going on further we have of course more repaid uh, more reported that people so far but all that is likely to grow and that's what we know but what we don't know so far is how long that impact of the uh, economy and then the economic crisis will be uh, uh, will be will be any further so i would say we should really trade with caution should uh, should to work on and think of what we invest right now especially in the stock markets because we might be able to get in much cheaper at much better prices, uh, especially during the times where the volatility is still so high, right? So the volatility being uh, being at uh, at very high elevated levels is still the uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to open. Uh, the volatility, which is uh, still in very high uh, elevated levels, is showing us that potentially markets might really uh, turn uh, turn much lower and. Uh, the volatility index, um, uh, Marshall talked about it. The VIX uh, index here is showing quite a quite a bit of uh, movement still, and uh, showing uh, showing quite a bit of movement um, still on the upper side. Meaning as well, markets either way, up or down, might really give us some sort of momentum into either direction. Well, I'm waiting for the market to load here. Uh, the index here uh, being at 65, which is a very high level, we can see since the market has started uh, kind of going lower, uh, very low towards the uh, mid of February, we are still at these. Uh, elevated levels that pretty much means here the vix means pretty much uh, how much the markets move in one direction how much any currency how much uh, any any uh, any index is is moving and uh, this one gives us the idea of uh, how much we can expect if we enter a certain price how much we can expect the price to move within a time span which is right now from uh, say if you're talking about the currency uh, some some weeks ago we entered the market at a certain price having a look for example the euro dollar we entered at a certain uh, price here within a day the market moved just slightly lower next day the market moved slightly lower again but with this elevated volatility we can see within this time span of a day the market really moves big time into one direction comparing this move here alone on the uh, which day was it this move alone on the 19th of March moved as much as we had seen kind of uh, in the previous time span or like uh, the movement during an entire week, right? So that's important information. And that also means uh, being invested right now should be taken, uh, we, we should really invest with caution. And that means as well that uh, the stock market movement so far for me, which is at interesting levels, might really move lower. Again, technical chart, a technical point of view um, is uh, what, I, what I'm saying and presenting right now. 
19,000 level in the Dow Jones might really move much lower because uh, the next uh, the next support areas, the next important support areas uh, would be at the 16,000 level. And I would not be wondering that with the economic uh, with the economic uh, standstill right now, with a big shutdown right now, that the markets might move lower. I'm still still a firm believer that uh, as long or the longer the situation uh, the longer situation goes on, the more we might see that this comes a bigger effect or gets a bigger effect. The information we know is already uh, kind of uh, in everyone's ears and eyes. We know that it's getting worse, potentially at least. I still believe that it's not getting far worse that uh, comparing it to the MERS or to the SARS or any other uh, big epi epidemics in the, in the past, uh, because the information we have so far right now that the mortality rate uh, is pretty low. Yes, we can also not uh, confirm and compare cases potentially in Italy to Singapore, but I know as well in Singapore we have more than 800 cases and so far just uh, free fatalities or mortalities uh, due, to, due to the, uh, due to the uh, uh, the coronavirus right now. On the other hand as well, we know that uh, people are being taken care of uh, much more and much uh, deeper than comparing it to Italy, where anyways during uh, regular times, the uh, hospitals and uh, intensive care units are being filled uh, to the extent of say 85 to 90 percent. So those numbers we have to see in context and uh, as well see what's going on. But uh, as long as the markets are being shut and as long as the economic is just a standstill, we can see there's no demand. Uh, Marshall talked about it and this is likely to get worse, right? So hospitality industry likely to suffer more, all these Airbnbs, all these hotel and booking.com and uh, all those businesses which, uh, which are really uh, potentially are being harmed further. And as well, of course, uh, the hospitality industry where we know as much as they contribute to the GDP numbers are the ones where people are getting unemployed. They don't pull into the social system and the entire idea of uh, having government aid uh, is uh, pretty well, it's pretty, pretty good. But uh, if we have no one who's paying for that, we can talk about hospitals and uh, the increase of healthcare when there's simply no money, uh, things and systems that uh, can't be can't be helped with this. So those are my current words. This is what I'm expecting right now. And we can have a look as well and um, what the oil price is doing. The oil price is weakening pretty much and uh, we can see the markets are uh, going much lower as well still. We can see US oil is uh, suffering right now. The WTI, if you'd like to invest in it directly. We have the 22 level here, which has been broken. More downside potentially being confirmed. The weekly chart looks pretty ugly. We can see that uh, two weeks back we had a bearish candle. Last week we had nothing. After a big move, usually we have a week where the markets don't move much. That's pretty much charting analysis, right? Big move down, confirming another move lower here would be that candle, which means this week we could see a drop towards the 15 or even 10 level, right? So if the oil wells are still in the operation right now, by the way, I see this, uh, this price war also as a price war between the Arabians uh, and the Russians against the Americans. I believe uh, pretty much that uh, the US economy is, uh, is the, the, the real enemy between Russia and Arabia combined. The Arabians don't really care much. They have enough of that, uh, or they have enough funds and they have enough uh, oil to, to spill the markets. Uh, and the US economy is pretty much the one which is being harmed. And looking about the fracking industry right now, it's more than unsustainable. And um, we expect more bankruptcies also to follow through in the US. Anyways, uh, oil markets to, uh, to tumble further is at least my understanding after looking at these uh, uh, big, vast candles here. No demand, simply the demand is not likely to change within the next two weeks. Hence, free fall for oil. Interesting buying opportunities at 1090. I'm not a big fan of uh, talking about the market is moving to parity when we're at 150 at certain to certain extent. I'm not a big fan of saying uh, everything is going down under, but we have to look at this from the from the current uh, point of view here. We see big, big, big bearish movements in the markets. Is this going to stop? Not at all. My friends working for German automotive companies, for Continental, for example, they say there's pretty much not a big production. The automobile industry in Germany uh, pretty much at a standstill. The engineers, the background, they are sent to work from home. Mercedes, VW, they're not producing a single car at the moment. They are not producing a single car. That means uh, everything which is going on as well is not uh, using much oil at the moment. There's no airplanes uh, using Jet 1A fuel, uh, Jet, uh, sorry, A1 uh, airplane fuel. All that means is all the markets are likely to fall further. And that's why I think it's a pretty much a legit uh, way of me uh, right now saying that the market is likely rather dropping towards the 11 area than uh, seeing a big recovery towards the 34 area, where potentially I would think of like also the markets uh, uh, might go 
uh, further to the upside. So that's my assumption right now as well. And that means as well, potentially, we have difficult times for now looking at uh, oil related uh, currencies. The Canadian dollar undervalued, as we've uh, right now found out from uh, from Marshall already, the Nucky Crown also underwater. Yet we can see that there's some sort of recovery possible. And that might be something looking beyond the crisis, which could be interesting uh, trading ideas. We've entered here, unfortunately, I made a trading mistake. I entered uh, 0.2 contracts instead of two contracts. In any case, we entered, the higher the market goes, we should really, as we say as, as pros, we should give a bit, right? So we always give a bit when the market moves higher. And uh, in this case uh, here, the 1255 level was probably a, an interesting uh, level to short the markets. I missed the, uh, the the price when it was at, uh, at the 1280 level here. Uh, I think this is a bit of a, a mistake here from the charting perspective, but the market moving higher, the more the market goes higher, the more the pretty much a mean reversion idea is likely to hit back and the more we might see the market returning back. The problem is, and that's the big, uh, the big warning sign here from my side here, if you have, say, for example, a $10,000 account, just every time to spend like a thousand or maybe maximum 2,000 position here, don't over leverage because you have to be able to sustain this uh, long-term trade. On the other hand as well, uh, if we are on the short side of things, we don't pay much for the swap. So that's a, that's a big help as well, meaning to say we can hold this position forever if we want to. And after crisis, which will eventually come through, usually Norway, a rich country, definitely oil depending, but the rich country in general will also make its way back up. And of course, as well, it's not a third world country, by far not. It's a highly, it's a highly educated country. Those guys, those people behind, uh, behind the scenes, they really know what they do. Hence, the Norwegian crown is suffering right now during these tough times. And uh, eventually also the Nokia crown will, uh, will uh, uh, return back to normal, uh, to normal levels. Let's have a look what I'm thinking of, uh, what, uh, what I'm talking right now. Here in Oc, looking at it from a long-term point of view here at, uh, at, uh, at this uh, trading view website, we can see similar things had happened also in the past when we are looking of it, uh, at it from a different point of view here and comparing it with the So I expect the same to happen right now. Obviously, the volatility at elevated levels, and we can see 2008, and right now the uh, Nokia crown weakening a fair bit again. But after that, after the crisis here, I expect the Norwegian crown to uh, to uh, strengthen a very, a very, a, a very a, a lot. Uh, I would say, and in this case, I would say as well, the higher it goes, the more we give, but. Uh, the more we give also in very small numbers, obviously, here as well. On the other hand, uh, looking at the Canadian dollar, that uh, also might offer some uh, uh, some similar potential. It's a similar trade, but um, of course, we have to see what we, uh, what we can do potentially as well. The uh, Canadian dollar is showing us also some weakening potential right now, also being at interesting levels here uh, in the, at the, at the comparing us to the euro. We can see the 157, the 160 area here, the main resistance area is showing us that uh, for a very long period of time, we have not uh, we have not gone really higher than this area. And that means as well, potentially we find a certain amount of seeding here right now, a seeding which is not going to be broken. A look at it from a sledgehammer point of view. How long does it take you to take your, to take your house down here? That's exactly what's happening here. In the past weeks, we can see the market did not, uh, did not really go much higher uh, despite a rather stronger Europe European currency right now. So I expect as well the Canadian dollar to strengthen further. So anything which you would like to invest in from Canada, potentially you might get for a bargain right now. Hence the Canadian dollar, a long story here, might appreciate further as well. And then last but not least, I would say as well, we have pretty good shoes right now uh, buying the pound. We also did that. So a very much a long-term trade. Again, small position, look at my portfolio here as well. So please uh, uh, take a small position if you are kind of interested in investing here as well. We bought down here, the market might tumble a bit further. The US dollar likely also come back as a safe haven currency. That's what I uh, pretty much uh, uh, believe as well. But uh, on the other hand, we can see on the monthly chart, the candle uh, here will end in the next uh, two days as well. So we don't have much more volatility potentially to add really to the weakening of the pound here as well. Uh, 
uh, and I believe as well, we are pretty much, uh, I think 35, 36 years, or we were at 36 years lows here in the pound, uh, and long story as well, afterwards here, I would believe the pound is strengthening a fair bit. So during uh, times with big volatility, first thing you have to do in order to make the same amount of trading profits, you can trade uh, with much smaller positions. Obviously, if you keep your positions similarly to say the uh, trading in January or December, you will be able to make much more profits, yes, but you'll be also much closer to a margin call that uh, your account manager at least first would say, hey, sorry, your account is back to zero, please uh, kind of fund some some more for us, uh, which uh, doesn't help the Swiss and doesn't help your own uh, investments. And uh, in the other hand, on the other hand, hence, I would say trade with caution, trade small, because the, the movement in the markets, the volatility is so big that even with small positions, look at this 0.2 position here, 0.2 contracts, something what you also potentially trade in your portfolio and we are already in profit for roughly uh, not not right now but uh, for just uh, uh, 0 0.6 uh, towards uh, one percentage points here just taking this position uh, which we uh, which we took uh, just a couple of days ago so in this case i think uh, the pound has a kind of still a lot of potential looking at the gold market a pretty uh, questionable right now since it's so illiquid you simply can't really see if you can purchase or sell your gold coins uh, try it out and let me know how the situation is in mainland europe so far i would say the markets are not really liquid and uh, we should really trade it uh, with uh, with caution here uh, uh, for the time being but uh, of course oil the lower it goes is also something which we might think of uh, uh, buying because after a huge move to the downside comparing it with 2008 right and 2008 we had a drop from 140 all the way down towards the 41 level right now we had a drop from 46 so far to 20 so we had a we had a bearish move and we lost say or oil lost only as in only 50 percent in value right now in absolute numbers we are very much at low areas of course the market price could uh, could uh, stable at the 17 area i have no idea if it does it might be the case but still i'm a firm believer that uh, under the current situation and under the longer shutdown here and i'm talking about the next two to three weeks that we are rather seeing uh, an oil price at 11 here which uh, which uh, which might be even uh, much more harmful to the economy what else we have the norwegian crown long story might be something interesting looking at the euro i think we can still uh, we can still see that uh, the rebound in the us dollar is following through we can see so far again also monthly chart doji candle here says basically nothing much here it could go either way it could go back to big time to the upside the market could find us uh, that we are seeing a euro which is fundamentally stronger within the next couple of weeks what I see as well being a European, of course I'm a German, but I'm a, being a European as well, that the European Union is pretty much uh, not existent anymore. Every government in uh, Europe, the Germans, the Italians of course at the beginning, the Spanish, had caused, uh, had caused the entire system uh, to be non-existent because uh, Italy says we close our borders. Czech Republic says we're closing our borders. Germany was waiting uh, longer to close, uh, to close the borders if they have been doing it so far. And so everyone does their, own, uh, does their own thing. That means as well the uh, European Union being kind of in a way obsolete and big problems, further problems for the community might, uh, might, show, might show the euro to weaken further. In general, it has been a softer currency as well comparing it with 2008, which I like to do uh, as of recently, we can see that the euro has lost a fair bit of value as well. We might see the same happening. Also, of course, we can look at the vast candles here now. The US dollar here previously had strengthened a fair bit, as uh, Marshall pointed out. Uh, last week, it was mainly the euro, which uh, really fought, fought back here. The euro has strengthened a bit, and I would expect as well, if the euro goes up further, we could see potentially today, tomorrow, the euro dropping a fair bit before the upside trend or the uptrend would be resumed. If the uptrend would not be resumed, that's the, the other scenario, the potentially even likelier scenario, we might see that the recent trend would be continued here and uh, that the euro would weaken further and the, the safe haven US dollar would come back. Furthermore, as well, we've talked about previously and uh, Marshall talked about it uh, when we're looking at the swaps as well, the Japanese yen, a crisis currency as well. The Japanese yen started to appreciate further and that's a bit of a warning sign as well to me. So the Japanese yen is uh, strengthening against the US dollar in part because the uh, the greenback has weakened a fair bit, as we just said, against the euro and also the Japanese yen could fight a bit further. So dollar yen going lower. That's a bit of a crisis indicator. That's a bit of an old, uh, of course, as well, carry trade. 
not really exist in currently, but uh, looking at the long-term charts, we can see here that the market is not showing us anything, but it's showing us that the resistance area here has not been uh, has not been triggered into further buying pressure. The markets are still kind of well within the uh, the, the sideways pattern, and ignoring these uh, the wicks to the upside, ignoring the wicks to the downside, we can see potentially the market really resumes the downtrend further, and that would be uh, uh, my last word here for the day. Uh, during our session. If the yen strengthens further, I see potentially much more, much more weakening in the stock markets, which is why I would say we should trade and buy with caution. Yes, the stock markets will be a good buy. The stock markets will be interesting as well to enter any fresh long positions. But if so, I would enter only you now say 25 or maybe even less, maybe only 20% of my of my maximum positioning in the markets right now. The markets are cheap. We can see that here. We will liquidate later on the day a bit of our BP and shell position. The market doesn't really look much uh, much bullish anymore. And uh, I would say we should really exit a bit further and wait for even uh, better entries, entries, which to me are likely to come. Guys, thanks for listening. Also, Marshall, thanks for your words. I think and I hope that uh, you've uh, taken a few possible ideas, a few possible trading ideas. Uh, I still also want to use uh, your group here as well. Please question all the number of uh, tests and the growing number of uh, corona infected. I, I have big question marks in my mind uh, um, with all the testing as uh, we don't have evidence, we don't have uh, blank data, we don't have a, a, a mass testing of uh, any population so far which which shows how much really the infections are being uh, are being by are being spread and in this case Marshall anything from your side you would like to add so far well yes actually I'd just like to say I, I agree with you there's a, there is a, a counter analysis growing that maybe this virus really isn't as serious as people think uh, so far yeah. most of the people who've died I mean it's in, unfortunate but most of them did have some uh, pre-existing conditions and the, the danger to healthy people may be much, much less than people think. Uh, if that's the case, then this is going to be, the restrictions will be lifted earlier than, than we fear and things could get back to normal eventually. I'd like to say though that if this isn't the case, then it, it's very interesting. Frank, as a European, is very negative on the, uh, is negative on the Euro and, and because of the negative on the <laughs> Europeans response to this whole thing. I, as an American, am, am just appalled at my government's response, and I'm therefore yeah. very negative on the dollar, because ah. I think millions, uh, the, the U.S. has very few, relatively few hospital beds, uh, very few respirators. They're, they're just totally unprepared for this, and I think the possibility for chaos and, and death and destruction in the U.S. is, is terrible. And I think that's going to, to cause the dollar to come off in the next uh, few few weeks as people focus on the appalling uh, U.S. preparations for this. Whereas for all it's their, the disorganization in the Eurozone, at least European countries have national health services that are, are well-funded and working right now. Yeah, so, I agree. Interesting, and I think uh, I think uh, you're pretty right. Uh, we both don't know really, and uh, we don't uh, have a, a big enough glass bowl to understand and see potentially the the, the long term idea. Uh, interesting as well that we have a slight different views on that. But uh, what I would say here at BD Swiss as well, we should take the smaller swings. We should take the smaller movement. Yeah trade them accordingly, right? So at the moment I see the market is moving lower. I think we should really um, we should really trade it to, to the downside right now. Potential entry actually, as we speak, let's open a trade here. Potential entry, uh, let's sell the market here right now and uh, let's play the smaller things. I think we can take kind, kind of uh, quite some advantage on these smaller moves for now. And then we look at the bigger picture afterwards. Sell the market now, sending a, um, a, a stop loss above the recent high here, above uh, the high of the one hour candle and uh, putting a, a take profit somehow here at these recent lows at around the 109.80 area. That's what I'm doing right now. And uh, Marshall, thanks again. You've uh, done a lot of work over the weekend when we talked for a few times. Uh, thanks for all the slides. Um, all you, everything you pointed out to us right now. I think everyone should be right, right now prepared nicely and uh, for what's going to come. Marshall, uh, stay healthy as well. Stay, uh, stay, uh, <laughs> stay you too. Not too much alcohol as much as I take. And then on the other hand, I think <laughs> we'll take, we catch up within the next couple of days again, right? Hey, uh, yes, talk to you later. And remember, <laughs> Peter Twist gives you more than trading.